Hello and welcome back to another episode of the I'm Moving to Italy podcast. This is Nathan Heinrich and I would like to welcome you to episode 11. Happy Palm Sunday, by the way. I am recording this on Palm Sunday, or as the Italians call it, Dominica delle Palme. One of the things I'm going to be discussing in today's episode are the very Italian and very Catholic holidays that are celebrated here in Italy. But before I get into that, I want to welcome another country to our family. By the way, this brings us up to a total of 21 countries. I keep waiting to get to a point where we are not adding new countries. I I just feel like it's going to at some point have to slow down. But some weeks we have six, and some weeks we have two, and this week we have one. And it's the country of Chile. And if you grew up in the farming community where I'm from, you would probably just call it Chile. (laughs) but I'm quite sure that it's pronounced Chile. It's official. We are officially on the continent, the mainland continent of South America, and welcome any other countries who may have joined us as well who just haven't shown up yet. I have been trying to record this episode all day long. I'm trying to record these episodes a little earlier in the day, and I thought for sure that this being Palm Sunday and the fact that we are in a very Catholic country, even though we're still in a red zone lockdown. I figured that people would be sort of having quiet Sunday at home, not really working today. But as I was preparing to record the episode, um, the same man who came and pruned the olive trees, who I believe is a handyman, he also came to do some, I believe, stucco work or masonry work underneath the stairs on on the villa here. And it was basically a lot of hammering and scraping and something that sounded like a giant vacuum cleaner. And it just kept going on all afternoon. And every time I would think it was it was over, it would start up again. So it is quite late in the evening here on on Palm Sunday evening. And it's so quiet now. And I'm in my little recording studio makeshift office here in the guest room. And I am just really, really happy to be back here with you. This week has definitely taken a little bit of a a mental toll on me. I've got a lot of projects I'm working on. And sometimes if you're working on a project and it's not going, at least this is my habit. If I'm working on a project and it's not going exactly the way I want it to go, I'll go out and sort of clear my head by getting in the car and driving somewhere and going shopping or going somewhere and doing something. And with these lockdowns still in place, just we're so limited on what we can do right now. I definitely have been experiencing some lockdown fatigue in in the past week and had a few days where I was kind of like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I really would like find myself just totally questioning like my very existence and meaning and purpose in life. And then I, I, I was like, what's going on with you, Nathan? Like, what are you, what is going on with your mental frame of mind? And then I just kind of came back to the reality that we're just not living in normal times. And I think even though we have all moved on, I think though we've all just kind of just as a human race, I feel like unless you're in the hospital fighting this virus, you really, we, we, I think we've all kind of moved on and said, okay, there are vaccines. This is over. We're beginning to think about getting our life back on track and we're making plans for the future. We're maybe even planning some travel to see family again. I know I am, but I still haven't even booked um, our tickets to go back to the United States for a visit because I don't really, I haven't gotten any clear word yet on when we are going to be sort of uh, seeing some change, some improvement in the situation here. And every Friday night, there is the announcement of what is going to be happening with the lockdowns. The situation in the country as far as are we going back into yellow zone or at least orange zone or are we going to start opening again? I know that Alessandro's grandmother has had her vaccine and other people are getting their vaccines here and it's definitely it's definitely heading in the right direction. 
one thing that I was told by someone here this week was that what they're probably doing is they're waiting for the major holiday of Easter to pass. Because in in Christian and Catholic holidays, Easter and Christmas are like the two biggest, highest holidays. And they just both happen to fall into, you know, winter and and very early spring here. So I believe what seems to be happening is they're just saying, okay, if we can just get past the point at which all these families want to get together and celebrate, and Easter and the Easter week, which we are we just came through the first Easter week, and now we are in uh, going into the actual Easter week with Good Friday, and I'm not sure what it's called. Saturday is there's a specific name for Saturday. I think it might be called Vigil, like Vigil, and then of course Easter, which is here, is called Pasqua. There's also the Monday after Easter, which is celebrated, which is called Pasquetta, and it's kind of a really cool tradition of. The families will box up all of the the leftovers from Easter dinner on Easter Sunday, and they will go and have a picnic at the beach or in the mountains or by a lake or something or in a park or just wherever. They go out into nature and have a really, really cool picnic. I just think that's so cool. One of the things that I just really love about Italy is how many traditions are just very, very rigorously and faithfully observed. In the United States, we are so diluted by so many different cultures sort of coming together and and blending into something new, really. I mean, there are a lot of cultures who maintain for at least the first couple of generations, maybe, or more, some of them. I know that there are Italian Americans who definitely celebrate some of the same holidays in the United States that they do here in Italy, but it's not, of course, quite the same. You don't have access to all the exact same things that you would buy, the same ingredients, the same. It just it's, it feels totally different. So as, as we've been approaching Easter and walking past the windows, there are, even during the lockdown, there are candy shops and there there are these gigantic chocolate eggs that are wrapped up in this very colorful cellophane and and there are very specific desserts for every holiday here i've noticed that there are there's like not only is there a food for every holiday there's also like desserts specifically for specific times of the year and i think the closest thing that we have to that in the united states is like corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day, which isn't even an American holiday. That's, of course, something that Americans have borrowed from the from the Irish. And, and then there's, you know, pumpkin pie and pumpkin flavored things for Thanksgiving time. And of course, Christmas, you know, who knows, there's just a, a whole bunch of different things for Christmas. But, but there just aren't so many specific things. Like there are specific cakes here that you get on Father's Day. That is not a thing in the United States. That is definitely not a thing. And so as this podcast continues, I will I will get very specific about all of these different traditions. And it'll be a little easier to be specific when I'm out and about and I'm able to sample things and I'm able to go to a restaurant or go go places a little bit more freely. So here we are in Easter week. So I'm going to go ahead and just wish everyone that's listening, whether you're Catholic or not, whatever, whether you observe the holiday or not, I'm not a Catholic, but I want to wish everyone a happy Easter because I will be recording my next episode on Easter Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and just wish everyone a happy Easter now, because by the time we get to the Monday after Easter, I'm sure we're all going to just be past it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way now. Happy Pasqua or Happy Easter to you. I found out something also that was kind of interesting here, and I it kind of made sense about why all the olive trees on the street were all pruned back very hard this week. I didn't put two and two together until I found out that here, instead of passing out palm branches to people when they go to church, everyone gets olive branches. And so I believe that the local churches probably need big piles of olive branches to pass out to the the groups of people that go through. And so I think that uh, the local churches probably got all their branches delivered to them by locals who had gone out and pruned their olive trees. So anyway, 
I am going to, I believe, consider myself to be an Italian as as I get my citizenship here, and as mm, I I think I'll feel more like an Italian when I can really speak the language. That's another thing that happened this week is is probably part of the reason why I had a little bit of a a mental bump in the road, so to speak, if you will. Is I was <sighs> some weeks I'll feel so strong about my Italian language because I'll be. Well, I, I guess it's probably because I'm really, I'm not interacting with anyone that speaks Italian. And yes, uh, we speak some here at home, but we primarily speak English. And so I'm just not able to be out and mingle with people that speak Italian very much right now. And I've noticed that it's, I'm I'm noticing the lack of practice with spoken Italian. And even sometimes when I talk to Alessandro, like, I, I get frustrated because he'll say something to me in Italian because he does speak to me in Italian at times. And it frustrates the heck out of me when he says some very simple s- sentences to me, and I I can't quite pick up what he's talking about. I mean, I can get maybe the direction that he's talking about, but I don't know if, if he's saying something in the positive or the negative. I don't know if he's saying, would you like to cook dinner, or I'm planning to cook dinner. I don't know if he's saying, I know he's talking about dinner, but I don't know what he's saying about it. <laughs> Do we need ingredients from the grocery store for dinner, or... You know, what would you prefer for dinner? I, I don't know. So I just, that's just one example. So yeah, I I definitely am still studying Italian every day. In fact, sometimes I'll study for a couple hours. I think that's probably part of my frustration is I'm studying on my language program that, I, that I'm doing here. I'm studying, you know, a couple hours a day sometimes, depending on what my schedule's like. And it's like, man, I should be able to do better. I must say, though, my reading comprehension is definitely improving on a steady pace. But reading is a form of information gathering, really, unless you're, I suppose, texting someone. And I do text and and send messages to, to the Italian family members here. And most of the time I have to use a translator to really confirm that I'm saying things correctly so I don't sound like a total raving lunatic when I'm communicating with them. But but really, r- reading Italian is just not the same as speaking it. But I just don't have this, the spoken language skills that I really crave yet. And so I think I'm going to have to just go a little easy on myself. I tend to, to kind of be a bit hard on myself. I'm sure I'm sure many of you listening to this can relate to that. I, t- I, think, I think that we tend to be, especially Americans, I think we tend to be very hard on ourselves in the United States. I'm noticing that Americans are harder on themselves, I believe, than Italians are. Italians are a little bit more um, casual in some, in some ways, not all. Again, I, I definitely find myself sort of being pulled into that direction of being just so, so rough on yourself. And I, I'm going to have to just give myself a break. I think that the fear from, for an American is if you, if you give yourself a break or if you give yourself a free pass or you give yourself room to maybe you say, oh, I, I, I'm giving myself room to grow or I'm, I'm just going to take it in time or take it slowly, piano, piano, slowly, slowly, the way the Italians say, the second that I give myself permission, my first instinct is, oh, you're being lazy. Oh, you're being lazy, Nathan. And um, I don't know, I feel, I, you know, leave, leave me a message on Instagram or, or write to me on the website and let me know if that's something that sounds like you can relate to, because I, I believe that's an American thing. I mean, it could be a British thing too. It could be also be a, a Canadian thing. It could be an Australian thing. It could be people in the Western world. And I'm not saying that Italy isn't in the Western world, but Italy is definitely its own world. That is for sure. And I just, I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong, people. I I love being here so much. I really do. I don't know if I say that enough. I catch myself in the grocery store, out for a walk. And I'm just like, you're living in Italy, Nathan. Like what a wonderful, what a wonderful privilege and what a wonderful experience you're living. I mean, I'll open a bottle of wine or I'll taste an Italian dish that Alessandro makes or that a family member makes, or I'll be cutting into a, a, a little ball of mozzarella that's been sitting in a salt brine. Just put it on a piece of bread with a slice of prosciutto or something, and, and I'm sitting there eating it 
for lunch and I'm just like, this is beautiful. Like, this is so different. Everything's different. Every day, it's different. And I love it. So I guess I I always feel like whenever I share something like, oh, I'm feeling kind of discouraged this week, or I'm feeling feeling the weight of these lockdowns, for some reason, I always feel like I need to follow it up with sharing with you guys how much I really do love being here. But the reality is I really do. So just just know that I, I just, I really absolutely love it. And I guess what I'm saying is sort of in a roundabout way is if you can love where you are when you're in a lockdown, might not be your first choice, like it's definitely not mine, but if you can love where you are during a lockdown, you can definitely love it when you're not during a lockdown. So anyway, I will hopefully be coming to you with news that we have just moved at least from the red zone into an orange zone. Keeping my fingers crossed this week for that. So I'm hoping to come back with that news in episode 12. I'm going to share my favorite. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this often or or all the time because I, I feel like there's a, I don't want to become one of those annoying people. It's like, oh, I'm learning this language. So that means I'm going to force this language down your throat every time. I'm going to start dropping Italian words into everyday life. <laughs> I totally get that. If you're listening to this, you understand English and you you might appreciate Italian, but I, you also probably don't speak Italian. If you do, all the better. There are definitely people in Italy listening because we hit the Italian podcasting charts this week. I think we're like number 70 in Italy this week on the podcast charts. So that's amazing. I don't know who's listening to it here. I don't know if it's, I don't know, maybe it's people that that have just recently moved here. I have no clue who's listening to this, but whoever you are listening to this podcast in Italy, I'm really happy you're listening. You might appreciate some of these Italian words that I throw around, but I'm going to try to keep the Italian language that I use in this, unless I'm referring to something that is specifically Italian, I'm going to just not try to become one of those annoying people that's like, let me show off that I can speak this new language. Because we, first of all, we all know I can't speak it yet. Okay, let's just keep it real here, folks. I do not speak Italian yet. I can get by in emergency situations, but I can't be trusted to save anyone's life if if that's what was dependent depending on it. If, if so, anyway. But I'm going to share this one word with you because my Italian coach that I meet with twice a week, Manuela, is in Milan. And her and I have become really great friends because we we talk for an hour twice per week. So we talk for two hours a week. And one of the words that we were going over this week was this word, which is sette mentalmente. (laughs) That is one word. And it means weekly. It's such a long word just for the word weekly. I mean, for a word that weekly in English is, I believe, a total of six letters. This is 16 letters in this word with six different syllables. But it's just such a cool word. I mean, just one of those things about learning this new language. I'm just like, man, what what a ridiculously long word just to express weekly. Anyway, settemanalmente. So there you go, folks. There's there's your Italian word for the week. <laughs> one one of the things that brought me a real intense joy this week, and it's something that brings me joy every single year at this time of the year. Uh, it certainly did growing up in California, and that is the taste and the smell of fresh strawberries. There was a Japanese family. The Aishida family were friends of ours growing up in California, and they were strawberry growers. But there were just strawberry fields all around us. There's a lot of them on the coast in Watsonville, Santa Cruz area. And there's just Northern California definitely has a lot of strawberry fields. And usually you can go to those to those fields and go to a They'll just set up like a really simple fruit stand. You can buy like fresh picked strawberries that are picked right out of the field that day, just like an hour ago. And and they'll just continue to bring in, as they pick them, they'll just keep bringing them up and putting them in the stand. And, oh man, I'm not talking about the giant strawberries that are grown in greenhouses. 
that are hybridized strawberries that have all that white pithy center. You know, there are so many varieties of crops. Okay, now I'm going to start sounding like a farmer's son, but just bear with me. There's something that I really, really dislike, and that is going into a grocery store, buying some produce, fruits, or vegetables that have been hybridized to look really good, to last a long time on the shelf, and to basically just sit there and look pretty. And the last thing on the list is of concern, really, is what do they taste like? And so oftentimes the taste is just bland and sort of limp and lifeless and 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 you sort of feel like you're almost biting into into just a tasteless piece of something. I, I don't even know. You know what I'm talking about, though. I'm sure those of you who have gone to grocery stores and purchased something that's not in season where you are, or maybe something that just doesn't grow locally where you are and had to be imported, it, you, it's very likely you had a variety imported to you. Now, I'm talking about fresh things. I'm talking about things like watermelons, peaches, nectarines, apples, pears, and strawberries, of course. And anyway, there's I, I really don't like those strawberries. They're those giant, giant strawberries, and you cut into them, and they're white inside. If you're cutting into your strawberries, and they're white on the inside, that means that you have a hybridized version of a strawberry that was not designed for sweetness. You're eating a strawberry that is that is unnatural. It's not. It was not naturally meant to be like that. All that white pithiness inside the strawberry is there to keep the strawberry looking looking nicer in the grocery stores for longer. Because strawberries, good strawberries, will not last once they've been picked for more than a day. So if your if your strawberries go bad within a day, that means that you really started with some very good strawberries. You're supposed to cut into a strawberry and it's supposed to be the same color throughout, which is a very, very deep crimson red. That's when you know you've had some good strawberries. And I'm just a big fan of strawberries because I grew up having them and eating them and and there's just nothing better than fresh. I mean, strawberry jam doesn't cut it, strawberry ice cream really doesn't cut it unless it's made with fresh strawberries. The strawberry gelato that they make here that is so good. It, it's clearly made with fresh strawberries. It, it doesn't taste like it's full of preservatives or artificial flavoring. It, it's actually the what fresh strawberries taste like. So this past week, Alessandro's mother came over for dinner one night and we had some vanilla gelato in the freezer. And so after dinner, I was like, man, we don't really have anything, any dessert to serve her. And then I remembered that we had just bought some strawberries. I chopped up some of the fresh strawberries that we had, squeezed lemon on them, which is a way to bring out the flavor of strawberries, and then just a tiny little bit of sugar, like a spoon of sugar, sprinkled that over them, and then and then just sort of let them sit for a little bit, like five minutes or so. And what that, the sugar and the lemon sort of have this, this really great reaction because it sort of makes the strawberries kind of produce, kind of bleed their juices a little bit. And you get this very red kind of syrupy, oh goodness. And you put that with vanilla ice cream or vanilla gelato. There's just nothing better in this world than vanilla ice cream or gelato with fresh strawberries, a little bit of lemon, a little tiny bit of sugar, Oh my goodness, that combination is so good. You know that there's a problem when the highlight of my week was strawberry and gelato, right? Like, does that tell you guys where where I am <laughs> mentally this week? <laughs> oh, geez. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I, I hope things change. I hope things open up here soon. Anyway... I think we're probably just about ready to move on to surrounding sounds. Let me see if there's anything else here that I wanted to discuss with you. I was talking to my friend John from California, and he is planning on moving to Italy. I'm very, very excited to have one of my friends hopefully moving to Italy as well. I mean, that's going to be just incredible. But he was telling me because they are planning a trip to to come to 
to Italy potentially in August, and he has found that there are flights, nonstop flights, that actually are you can purchase them for flight here in June. And I hadn't even seen that. So from San Francisco, there are nonstop direct flights from San Francisco to Rome. They are, I think, sort of just doing what doing what they can do, which is to just say, let's let's make some flights available in the hopes that when that date arrives, things will be open, more open, and and you can probably travel with that vaccination, that digital vaccination doc document that we talked about in one of the previous episodes. So anyway, that's really good news that there are flights being, commercial flights being scheduled to fly here. And and I would assume, I'm going to check into into more details, but I would assume that that's probably from multiple countries that are are doing vaccine rollouts. They're probably starting to schedule flights here as well. I will keep you updated. I also am going to be talking about the, the power of the Italian passport. I know there are a lot of people who are descendants of Italians, and there are ways to get your citizenship if your grandparents or even your great grandparents were Italian. I have friends that have done it, other people that I have met. I'm in a few groups on Facebook of people that have gotten citizenship, and there's also a, a really interesting annual report that comes out every year, and it is a report that shares how powerful the passport from your country is. And I'm going to try to have that information ready for you for this next coming episode. And I was very pleasantly surprised to find out how high the Italian passport ranks within the world of of travel. And what that means is, to which countries do you have access as an Italian citizen without having to get a apply for a visa. That's really what it means. So anyway, I'll go into more detail on on a future episode about that. But anyway, let's get into some of our surrounding sounds for the week. So again, I know I sound like a broken record by now. We are still locked down, so I'm still trying to be creative about what sounds I'm able to gather for you. Just one street over from where we are living right now is a really, really beautiful and really, really big cemetery here. And that is a cemetery where Alessandro's grandfather was buried. And I was fortunate enough to know him and also was here for his funeral and here when he died. So he's buried there. And so sometimes we walk over there and, and visit his grave and leave some leave some flowers or leave a candle. And that's another topic I'm going to talk about sometime is... is the whole Italian culture around death, because there's no other way to say it except for there kind of is a whole death culture here. And the way that the traditions and and everything around the way the loss of a loved one is handled here is so, so different than what we have in in the United States. And I I find it fascinating and some, some details shocking and just more than anything, just, just really interesting. So that's another thing I'm going to share with you in the future. But one of my surrounding sounds was walking over there because we are kind of limited on where we can go right now. But walking through the cemetery is still something that you can do. And so I was walking through the cemetery and it really is spring here because there were just birds singing and there were there's so many flowers in bloom and so many flowering trees and and shrubs and plants in bloom right now. And so there were just a lot of bees just buzzing around. There was there was a flowering quince, this really beautiful particular plant that's I believe from Japan or maybe China, but anyway, it's it's native to the Orient somewhere. And it's a very, very coral, kind of pinky red corally color. And it blooms this time every year. It's very possibly blooming where you are right now. And so if you see a plant that you don't see the rest of the year, but you see these really orange, coral, pinky colored flowers blooming right now, it very well could be flowering quince. Anyway, there were these really, really beautiful bumblebees just buzzing around. And so I was filming and I just captured some of these bumblebees working, going to town, working away on these, on these flowering quince 
So I have the sound and they were so, they were so vigorous and so industrious and so, and so plump, but they were really, really made quite a, quite a sound as they were working. So anyway, I captured the sound of the bumblebees pollinating the, the quince, and then very appropriately in the cemetery, in the, the cypress trees and, and just kind of throughout the cemetery, there are doves that just sit there and just coo. And so you're just surrounded as you're walking through the cemetery, you're surrounded by the sound of these doves just sort of singing and cooing their song. And I've always loved the sound of doves singing their very, very soothing song. And I found it to be very comforting and and beautiful as I was walking through the cemetery this, this past week. So so enjoy those sounds of spring. But I also, because, because I had to endure the sound all day as I was waiting to try to record this episode, the sound of the man who was doing work here on the house. So I also captured the sound of the man working and banging on the outside of the house underneath the, the outside stairway. And so I have that, a few a few of those sounds as well for you. So enjoy, and I will be back afterwards to say goodbye. you enjoyed those sounds from Italy from this week. And once again, have a really, really peaceful, happy, and beautiful Easter week. I hope that you are staying healthy and well wherever you are in the world, and that that things are improving and things are getting better wherever you are. Thanks again to those of you who left. There's been new reviews left on the podcast this week. So I just want to thank those of you who have sent me messages on Instagram, private messages or public comments on Instagram or sent me private messages. We are a five-star rated podcast. Thanks to your reviews. And I just really appreciate the, the lovely reviews. So any of you who have time to leave a review on the podcast, that helps us so much. If you're enjoying the podcast and it's bringing bringing you some entertainment, it's something you look forward to each week. I and especially if you listen on Apple, I really appreciate your reviews. They just they just make all the difference in the world. So thank you for that. Have a beautiful week, and I really look forward to coming back here with you. I look forward to this every week. I look forward to this time. As I sit here, I never feel like I'm sitting here alone. I know who I'm talking to because of how many of you reach out to me during the week. So I I always know that I'm talking directly 
to you and and it, it sort of feels it's a part of it's a time in my week where I feel very connected to you and so thank you for being here and sharing this time again with us this week you take care god bless ciao ciao ciao